DBT. You have a handout for this. So if you look at your handout, somewhere in the midst of crazy, probably more towards the beginning, but I don't know. And it may even be the other one. Oh, it's in this one. It says, oh, it does have a DBT in it too. I'll see it, it look a lot like this. Now, I want you to put most important handout going across the top. Most important handout going across the Okay. So if we go to Sister Girl, I want you to kind of put a little maybe fold the page back, but go to the little hip fracture lady and let's make sure we see some of her comorbidities. What does comorbidity mean? Additional craziness, right? So we have, and we looked at the page, we took care of what it looks like. We have a select all idea of what a hip fracture would look like. But what does it say in terms of, you know, basically DVTs and all the different risks that are up here on the board? It says age, it says female, it says history of osteoporosis, it says decreased estrogen, and then it says increased risk of falls. So we know the 65 and up, all it is if you're a female. It's not that men can't break their hips, it's just that they rarely do. Now, you see what it says? What is that? T-I-A, what does that mean? What is that exactly? You think this is ischemia? What is a T-I-A, everybody? K, what's a T-I-A? So why couldn't you just say that and save me time? Okay. Now, so TIA, y'all know what it is. Y'all better come on. We'll be here all day. TIA is a warning sign that you're going to have a stroke. It's spelled out trans ischemic attack. Your doctors and your nurses at the hospitals and the facilities you work with are going to call it something that you never will. What are they going to call it? A mini stroke. A mini stroke. You ain't going to do that. A stroke. It's not a clot. It's a narrowing and decreased oxygen to the brain, but it is not a stroke yet. It's a warning sign. 30 days from now, you might have a stroke. Patients be having TIAs. I had a couple of you tell me that your family member actually was having TIAs. Nobody knew what it was. Because why? It only lasts a few minutes. But when you have one, you're at risk for fall. You have the similar risk of, you have exactly the same symptoms. Okay, so you ignore them. You have weakness, your shit give out, you dizzy, you got like funky eye stuff going on, blurred vision like Taryn was telling us. You got all the crazy stuff. And it goes away, so you don't pay attention to it. Away for minutes, but it's a damn sure good reason why you fail. Vertigo, all of that goes for TIAs. So you see, risk for falls. When you're anemic, you're dizzy, you're tired. Makes sense. Patients, that's called polypharmacy. Oh yeah, you remember. When we talked about it, we said, quit putting people on drugs. You know, quit throwing a drug at everybody for every damn thing. Because you get to the point where you have a polypharmacy. By definition, how many drugs is that? Seven or more, mm -hmm. five or more, too many, okay? So we got patients on 23. My, my personal record in my patient care was a home care patient. 47 damn drugs. Half of them were duplicates. I took him off of at least 10 of them. I love what primary care providers are doing now. They stop them all. Every last one of them, they stop them all, and we re-add as you need. Because some people are on medications they don't even need anymore. You will see those patients, but it's up to you to stop it. I'm sorry, at 
45 years old with your OB smoking self, you were given three blood pressure meds. You are now 87 on the same damn I never had. Why? Because you lost a lot of weight as you got older. You damn sure stopped smoking. You are eating whatever we give you, so you can't go to Burger King all day. But you own them same three meds because some asshole checked to see if you smoke them. You'll see those patients. And you know what you do? The A takes the vital signs. You push the drug cart. Takes two hours, done, sign out. Bye, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Raise your hand if you know that that's true. Roll the car, push the mask. Nobody really is assessing the fact that the aide said the blood pressure was 110 over 70. What the fuck is she giving those three meds for? I've seen you where you don't even know what the diagnosis of your patients are. Scary. So, they're going to make us fall. The more meds, the more you fall. Cardiovascular disease. If you have cardiovascular disease, and please add diabetes, please. If you have one or two or both, you have neuropathy. You don't feel the floor. You get out of bed. You don't even feel the floor. I don't know if you know, but everybody over 65 and on occasion, my old ass. When I get out of bed, I gotta be like, hey, I'm sitting here for a minute. Dangle my shit. <laughs> oh, okay, I feel like they're here now. Now I can get on up. That's real. That's real. All your patients should sit, dangle, then get up. Because if they just get up, they're gonna be dizzy and fall. Think about it. Okay? Now, so we got a reason why Sister Girl is a hot ass mess. We see here, we're doing our CERC checks, which is called neurovascular assessment before she has surgery, and comorbidities. We did all that shit. We said that already. Okay? Now, turn the page and let's look at her little, I think she has a little picture in here where she's laying down with a little pillow. Y'all see her? Okay, that's a big, nice, wonderful picture for you. Because as we get on our way to DVT, something didn't go right right here. So if we look at her, what do we do after every surgery? The first thing, look. Okay, does it say incentive spirometer? No. What does it say again? Oh, okay. So when we talk about cough and deep breathing, it's more important than an incentive spirometer, but add that too. Add your incentive spirometer. What is this? Atelectasis. Now, how do we use our incentive spirometer? Do we tell the 92 year old lady to suck the balls? No. no. <laughs> that you told that lady to suck the balls. However, what you, yeah, that's how you do it. You put the damn thing to your mouth, it's got the little ball. You gotta suck in, right? Inhale. That's how you will remember it for exams. Balls. I think some of you will be fine. Now, <laughs> when it comes to 96 year old Betty, if I hear that you went in that room and told her to suck them balls, in Jesus' name, and pray about it later. So when you go in the room with Betty, you know you say something encouraging. Now, Betty, I want you to inspire higher. So you try to get that ball higher and higher each time, but the only way she can do it is inhale, and guess what? Hold it 10 times an hour. 10 times an hour. Inspire higher, Betty. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know where to Okay, now, so we got stockings and compression devices. That's called SCDs. Sequential compression devices. You know what the problem is? You don't know what you're doing with those. So let's go and learn. That is why your patient may die because you don't know what you're doing with SCDs. And SCDs are preventing. 
sequential compression devices. We got to know all the rules. Can the patient take them off? Hell no. First rule. Patient cannot take these off. Hell no. Can you delegate it? Absolutely. Sort of kind of got to remember that I just said that. Yes, you can delegate that. Mm -hmm. How long can we have them off of our patient? What's the max? 30 minutes. Thank you. So you probably work somewhere where they're clueless. Raise your hand if that is not what's happening. So the longest time they're supposed to be out of these SCDs is 30 freaking minutes. If they're off of them for up to an hour, you need a new order because they might already have a DVT. They're supposed to be out of those for only 30 minutes. This is what I see crazy happening at the jobs. Now I want you to, you gotta make sure you put your two fingers between the patient and the SCDs and that's supposed to be so tight. You look like you got knee has on for two years. They come, you have to do your uh, neurovascular and you want this patient not to take them off at all until they're walking six times a day. So they're up more to finally taking them off. They're ambulating more than they're sitting. They wear them in a chair and a bed, either way. If they up in a the chair, they still gotta have them on. That's another thing I see wrong. If they're up in a chair, they still have to have these. Now, before we actually put them on, and oftentimes, by the way, you're not even involved in it, they're put on in the PACU. For my purposes, for my maternity patients, when we do a C-section, they're put on in the OR. So that means before your patient has surgery, you had to make sure they got ordered. Now, when they get ordered, you have to just remember you are measuring the patient first, send the order through. You are doing a neurovascular skin assessment. If there's a wound, they can't go over that. There might be some ankle ulcers. You never know with these patients. They can be put over TED holes, anti-embolic stockings. You can put them over the TED holes. The cornstarch can go inside so that they don't itch so bad. Cornstarch, and plus people be sweating, so the cornstarch should help a lot. Your patient is at risk for a clot within minutes of removal. Your patient is at risk for a blood clot within minutes of removal. Okay. Oh, that's what it was. The other day I told you this. I told you that the new language is going to be VTE. What does that stand for? Venous thrombolic prophylaxis. That's VTE prophylaxis, SCDs. Venous thrombotic, venous thromboembolic prophylaxis. That's what's on there. So DVT prophylaxis, right? But it's not DVT anymore, it's VTE. Venous thromboprophylaxis. Okay, so we're looking at this lady and it clearly says that we're gonna do a little 
VTE basically. Uh, make sure you write that on here. And so you have your SCBs. Then it says turn every two hours. That may be why she got the DVD. Maintain the leg abduction. Now don't be dumb. Don't turn nobody on their damn hip that just had surgery on now. Don't do dumbness. Okay, so don't do that. But we still got to turn. So you're shifting your weight. You're shifting, you're shifting, you're shifting, you're shifting. But you can't shift when it's this hip, right? So you just turn a little bit, you know what I mean? Okay, but either way you go, you have to be very careful with this hip. So toes have to point straight forward. When they first come out of the OR, they point to the ceiling, don't they? Okay, so if I turn my patient, they still got to point straight forward with the hip abduction. Can't be this. Can't be this. Got to be this. Straight forward abducted hip. Look at the picture. Okay, so really know that three pillows have to be between those legs abduction pillow which is shaped like an A. It's called an A-frame for a reason. A-frame pillow, abduction pillow. What kind of pain control? Uh oh, wait a minute. Circulation and neural checks. What do you call that now? I taught you with the first page. How many P's? Six, Six P's and two C's. two C's. Neurovascular assessment. Okay, pain control, what do we got? What we got? What we do? PCA pump. They're with the picture here. PCA pump, right? So they didn't have the PCA pump. Mobilize as soon as possible. Within what? Six hours. Very good. Within six hours of any surgery, y'all should have been up and at it. Are you getting them up? No. Physical therapy. So what if they caught off? You call in and acting a fool. Not appropriate. That's for all of y'all in long-term care, skilled care. Not appropriate. They called off, we need a replacement. That's okay, uh, now go down to the bottom. Complications, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. DBT slash what? PE. Okay, so add the PE. Neurovascular complications, you can put compartment syndrome. Pulmonary complications, what does it say? What should you do to prevent it? Um, okay, good. Skin breakdown, pressure ulcers, OMG, urinary retention. Let me tell you about that. The men may have an enlarged prostate, correct? Mm -hmm. Or the female just may have urinary retention. Hell. Now, so we are going to do a couple of things. How do you encourage somebody to pee pee? Run the water. Okay, so run the water. What else should we do? Stop. <laughs> Privacy. <laughs> ah, we're gonna do that too, baby. Can't you bring warm water all the way Pour warm water or perineum. Positioning, which is difficult with this hip. The strangest thing, and thankfully it is on your uh, U World or your Inflex 4000, the strangest thing, but it is something you want to add to the list, is what, Janae? Pull pubic hair. Y'all pray about it. Pray about it. Who's seen it on the software? Yep, it's on there. You better remember it. If I catch your ass full of people's pubes, I'm going to kill you. You do not need that legal charge. You don't need that complaint at the hospital. My nurse pulled my pubic hair. Not a good look on your part. But you better put it in the list because it's on there. It's on there. Crazy as hell. Look it up. If you Google this, this is a way to make a person pee. It may be a way for me to kick your ass if you pull that. But I'm saying, then you got all these waxable people, so good luck. Now, Big Mom might be going to the wax place. You know, her little freak on, honey. So y'all don't know. Y'all don't know. Okay, now, so y'all looking at this, we might have to use, if we did all this, what do we have? Dura, choline, 
is a medication that the physician may order or the nurse practitioner. Uricholine. It's cholinergic. Okay. Remember our trick? Let's do our trick. Our trick. And this is a cholinergic drug, not anti. Our trick with cholinergic, anti-cholinergic drugs was, what's the codes? Can't can't see. Let's start clean, okay? Can't see. Can't spit. And can't pee. And can't shit. All right. There you go. So if that is the trick for anticholinergic drugs like atropine and um, uh, benzotropine, Symmetrail. If that is the trick for anticholinergic medications, can't see, can't spit, can't pee, can't shit, blurred vision, dry mouth, urinary. Then when I give a cholinergic drug, now I can pee. That's what you're going to know. Okay. All right. Keep it moving to the DBT lady. I mean, to the DBT ish. Oh, wait a minute. Put some stuff on here. I want you to put a couple things on here. You see where it says bleeding under um, neurovascular complications? Put a thousand to fifteen hundred cc blood loss. A thousand to fifteen hundred cc blood loss. How many liters you got in your body? Uh, you just lost one and a half, right? That's what that means. Under where it says bleeding, which is under neurovascular complications. 1,000 to 1,500 cc blood loss. I want you to write this. Push fluids, high fiber, stool softener. Push fluid, high fiber, <coughs> stool softeners. 